Welcome back to another UNC football recruiting podcast here on Tar Heel Illustrated.com. And if you happen to be checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me, as she always does whenever the Tar Heels pick up a football commitment, our director of football recruiting, Miss Dina King. And Dina, the Tar Heels picked up their 15th commitment of the class of 2021. JJ Jones, a six foot four wide receiver from Myrtle Beach, popped for the Heels. He's just the second kid, not from North Carolina, but it's hard to get much closer than Myrtle Beach. So what can you tell us about J.J. Jones? Well, J.J., I've known, uh, been in contact with J.J. for, uh, you know, over a year or so. Uh, He reached out to me, you know, like a lot of kids do when they uh, take visits. And uh, he took an unofficial visit up to UNC and really liked it and, you know, I think I did an intro on him, and then he took a visit, and I, I did what we always do, little updates on him, and uh, he, he he took a visit up to UNC, and, you know, I, I tried to get his uh, take on the visit, and um, in asking him questions, you know, I asked where UNC was, um, you know, what an offer would mean to him at that time, because he didn't have one, he's like, so one Miss King is one of those offers that that I really want, and I finished the piece and everything. And a couple of hours later, Carolina did offer him, and I had to redo the article and include the uh, and get back in touch with him and ask him, uh, you know, how it felt to actually get the offer from Carolina. So I know Carolina's been one of his top schools in the whole recruiting process, and you know he's he's a great kid. Uh, think he's going to fit in really good with the Carolina offense because he's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, got a lot of good speed. He's he's a perfect complement to, you know, what Carolina's got coming in. Uh, they they also have Gavin Blackwell and Kobe Pesor, and they had signed Josh Downs and, you know, any of those smaller type receivers. I think he's a perfect complement. Well, absolutely. I think a lot of people, when they look at this, disregard, you know, some of the – disregard the three-star because people are doing four-star stuff and five-star stuff and all that kind of thing. This is absolutely a fit type of kid. If you look at the air-rate offense and you look at the way they want to run this thing, this kid fits. And it just with his route running, his hands, his size, his strength. And, and if you project out a couple of years, the kind of guy that can get into the corner of the end zone and get the ball. And I think that's the way they look at somebody like him. As you've paid attention to his growth as a player, what has been something that maybe stands out that he's really gotten a lot better at in the last year? Well, he he's a good playmaker. And, uh, you know, his speed, he's not as fast. But I, I, I can see a lot of Mac Hollins in him because, you know, once Mac got the ball, he just seemed like he got faster and, you watch his highlight tape, and he'll catch the ball maybe a 10, 12 route and then turn it into a 60-yard touchdown. He outruns everyone. So uh, just just a great all-around receiver. Uh, like I said, just going to complement and excel under Coach Longo's offense. And, you know, he's he'll have a great wide receiver coach in Coach Galloway because – you know, a lot of these wide receivers, they talk about some of the kids that Galloway has has taught and that are in the NFL right now. Michigan, Penn State, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, Virginia Tech, Louisville, there are a lot of big-time schools either that have been established for a while, maybe reestablishing themselves, or of regional importance that, uh, that, that have offered this kid, and he picked Carolina. I think this is a big get. I think this is a get that the fans should be very, very excited about. And not just because they once again are getting a kid offered by some of these other schools, but those were legitimate offers. If Georgia would have taken this kid. South Carolina would have taken this kid. You know, Penn State would have taken this kid. I, I think this is a, a huge uh, pickup for Carolina. So for you, what does this do to the class? It's number six in the nation before this commitment. They may not move up as a result of it. But as far as the strength of the overall class, what does a pickup like this do for the targets? Well, I'll, I'll piggyback on you for a little bit. His dad played at West Virginia, so 
you know, he, he had that connection too. And, and, so, and let me interrupt real And the Mountaineers also were one of the teams that offered. You could throw uh-huh. Missouri, Ole Miss. I mean, there's a ton of schools that offered this kid. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, the he, he would make the third wide receiver. And that trio, I mean, you look at that trio, Gavin Blackwell, Kobe Basor, and J.J. Jones. I mean, I, like I told you many times in our many conversations we had, you know, what wide receiver wouldn't want to play with a Sam Howell, a Jacoby Grit, Grizz, Chriswell. You got Jefferson Boys there. You got – you even you got have – You got Drake Chris May coming Luder along. And then Drake May. You're coming in with a class with Drake May. It's all meshing in really good for the Carolina offense. And when you look at the fact that he's the second player from outside the state, we've made a big deal. We've done podcasts, we've done stories, done a lot of stuff about building, Mac building the fence around the state of North Carolina. And that's hugely important, especially as talented as the uh, state is right now. But you also got to get guys from outside the state. And I know that South Carolina is just the next state over. And if you're in Myrtle Beach, you're kind of right there near the North Carolina state line. But it's important to get a kid from South Carolina. It's important to get a kid – who might be in what some people call the SEC footprint. Don't you agree with that? Yeah. You know, most kids from South Carolina, they grow up South Carolina Gamecocks, Clemson Tigers. But there's an awful lot of Carolina Tar Heel fans too. And, you you know, in, in basketball and football, but Carolina's had a lot of success in South Carolina bringing some of the Palmetto studs up to Chapel Hill. So, uh, you know, it's not it's not that far from Myrtle Beach to Chapel Hill, so no. it, it's it's a it's a big get for uh, Coach Brown. And before the Clemson people watching this get mad, I understand that Clemson is in the state of South Carolina. It's just that the eastern part of South Carolina has tended over time to be a little bit more Gamecock oriented than than Clemson oriented. Yeah, I, I agree. So I just I just think this is really. Uh, a big get for for the Tar Heels, and as they continue to build this fantastic 2021 class. Absolutely. J.J. Jones, the 15th member of Carolina's class of 2021, which is sixth in the nation. He's certainly a need, and they got that need. They now got three receivers in the class, like Dina said. So there might be more coming up. The next month is going to be big for this program. There are some other kids who are going to be announcing, uh, most of whom announcing where they're going. One very important target is announcing his final few schools in the next month or so as well. So stay here with us, THI, on our website, tarheelillustrated.com, or check out some of our stuff here on the YouTube channel. You get all the updates, all the information you need on UNC football recruiting, basketball recruiting, and the Tar Heels themselves. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. All right. Thanks for stopping by.